So it's time to nail down my Western States 2023 top 10 predictions. Now with over 20 contenders in both the women's and men's fields, it's been harder than ever to pick a top 10. I'll run you through my reasons behind my picks, but a lot of this is gut feeling. And if I haven't picked your favourite runner, I'm sorry, but let me know about it in the comments and tell me about your picks as well. I'm going to be submitting these picks on the Fantasy Free Trail platform. If you're unfamiliar with that, do sign up and give it a go. It's completely free and it's a fun way to see how your picks compare with the wider ultra running community. Once the deadline passes, they also show the community picks, which is essentially a top pick for each position, giving you a good idea of who the favourites are. So it's definitely worth checking out. This isn't an advert or anything, I just think it's great fun and it's a good way to become more familiar with the top ranked runners in our sport. Also, I hope one day they introduce mini leagues so I can start one for the channel and we can all see how much better at predicting races you all are than me. I know Travis Lonkar, the creator of the platform, has retweeted a video of mine before, so Travis, if you're watching, thank you and please add mini leagues. Now just before I get into who I have picked, I think the most hate I'll get in the comments will be from Anthony Castells and Adam Merry fans, as I've seen them high up on a lot of people's lists and I haven't gone for them. Now I mentioned that I am nervous about those calls, they could have amazing races and I'll lose a lot of points, but for the most part I've favoured experience and good performances on the world stage, like UTMB, Hard Rock or Western States in previous years, so they didn't quite make the cut. I don't think my picks on the women's side are quite as egregious, maybe leaving out Megan Morgan or Esther Sillag, although I think the most controversial thing will be the order of my women's picks. Anyway, for the most part I'll just try and explain as I go, let's jump into it. Okay, so Cody Lind has been coming to this race since he was a child. His grandfather was the medical director and was on the board for many years, and his dad is a two-time finisher. The shotgun that starts the race every year is owned by the Lind family, and his dad fires it to start the race, like his grandfather did before him. So not many people have such strong links to the race. Cody himself now has two Western States top 10 finishes, a 4th in 2021 and ninth last year, so I think even with a field this strong, he's so familiar with this race, and that experience will get him another top 10. Riley is a young, exciting talent that pushed Devin Yanko all the way at Havelina last year, finishing less than 10 minutes behind. Also in that race was Heather Jackson, who a lot of people seem to be tipping for big things here at States, and Riley beat her by nearly an hour. That being said, this field is so deep and experienced, I just couldn't fit Riley in any higher, so I'm going with 10th. A local lad, Cole Watson knows this course well and finished 14th last year. He recently won pretty convincingly at Canyons but did bonk hard at Black Canyon after going with the early hard pace, so I do worry about that happening again here. I think he's well capable of a top 10, I just struggle to see him beating some of the top guys in this field. Oh, we're getting controversial already. I think she might even be in the top five community picks when they come out, as a lot of people are expecting big things. Ida Nilsson has had a long and amazing career, so I don't doubt she's capable of finishing higher up. But for me, there's two reasons why she's not higher. One, this is her first 100 miler, I believe. And in this field, there's so many women who've already achieved incredible things over that distance. And two, basically mirroring my number nine men's pick, she had a great race at Canyons, but blew up pretty bad at Black Canyon after pushing Heather Jackson for the lead she ended up fifth, which makes me think she couldn't cope with either the heat or the fast pace, both of which will be present here. I could easily have Jeff and Cole the other way around. Jeff finished 11th last year and won Bandera in January to get him back on the start line. In a recent video he posted, he said that he did no speed work for States last year and he's currently fitter than he's ever been. So seeing as he almost made top 10 last year and he's much better prepped this time, he's made my list. I'll add that I'm favouring Jeff and Cole over equally exciting golden ticket winning runners like Anthony Castells and Adam Mary purely because of their experience from last year. But I think that all four of them are in that category that's just below those world class guys who've proven themselves on the world stage like most of my top five, except for one wild card that I'll get to shortly. As you can tell with my Jeff and Cole picks over the likes of Adam Mary, I'm leaning towards experience either at Western States or at a similar level race like UTMB or Hard Rock. So with Katie Asmuth being a top 10 returning finisher two years in a row, I think she knows exactly what it takes to finish top 10 here and I think she'll do it again. I've gone with her over Taylor Nowlin who I've left out as Katie's results this year have been better so she looks to be in the better form. Mr. Consistent at this race over the last few years, you can always rely on Tyler to hang back, run sensibly, wait for people in front to blow up and slowly move through the field. I don't expect him to be with the front pack or hear much about him until late on, but I feel like he's guaranteed a top 10, so he's going into seventh for me. Okay, a lot of people seem to think Heather will win or podium here, at least in the comments section of my women's race preview. I've got two reasons again why I'm popping her a little bit further down than most. She's raced three ultras, with the two longer ones being two of the flattest out there. I know Canyon's 50k has a decent amount of gain, but considering she faded towards the end of both her 100k 
and 100 mile races and they're flat. I think the elevation here at States could derail her podium or top five hopes. Secondly, she front runs with the confidence earned from being a world-class triathlete. She was leading up both Havelina and Black Canyon for a long time before blowing up and I'm not convinced she won't do the same here or at least try and keep up with someone like Courtney which I don't think will end well for her. Put it this way, when Camille Heron came to this race for the first time, she was already a multiple world champ and world record holder on the road and track, and she struggled to get it right here. I think Heather will win a big race in the future, but I think this one could be another lesson in how not to pace 100 miles. If she fades from the lead, I think she's still good enough to hold on to a top 10 though, so I'm going with 7th. I've previewed him already, so I'll just simply say, at this point, I can't see Arlen improving on his third place from last year. Not that he's not good enough, just that a few of the guys in this field I think are even better. My gut feeling is that the field is stronger than last year, meaning a few people will need to go backwards, so I'm dropping him down to 6th. Not confident in this one, he'll probably win now that I've said that, but that's what I'm going with. I've already spoken about Camille as well, so I'll be quick here. She's improving year on year and is undoubtedly an amazing runner. I think she'll take another step forward here, but the field is just too strong for her to break into that top 5. I'm going with 6th. I don't know why I'm feeling Daniel Jones over guys like Anthony Castells, but I am. It's kind of just a gut feeling this one. Possibly it's because his golden ticket win at Tarawera contained over 10,000 feet of elevation gain, which is much closer to the gain here at States than the 3,000 foot of gain at Black Canyon. He also beat Hayden Hawks in that race by nearly 15 minutes, which is pretty dominant. I know Anthony beat one of the most competitive fields in the US, including Tom Evans, but that was much closer, with less than five minutes between them. For some reason, I just see Daniel being the surprise package here, and seeing how he let the leaders go out at Tarawera before taking control in the second half, I think he's less likely to go hard too early, and I think Anthony, being one of the fastest guys in the field, is more likely to go off hard. I'm just kind of seeing shades of 2017 Jim Wormsley with Anthony. Nothing against him, as I said in the intro, I'm probably going to regret not picking him. Again, I'll keep this brief as she features in my preview. Her Black Canyon win was a tactical masterclass and she was in such a good position at halfway last year before things went awry. But this year, my theory at least is that she'll let the leaders go and they won't come back as easily. I just can't see her come from behind victory with a field this strong. As I mentioned in my preview, I've got no idea what Matthew is capable of on this course. I originally had him in 7th, just because I think his skills lie on the more technical mountainous terrain. But the more I thought about it, and about his performances on the world stage against the likes of Killian, I realised he needed to be in my top 5, and could probably win this thing, but I'm popping him in 4th. Again, kind of a gut feeling here that's hard to explain. A great 6th place last year, she has what it takes to have a great day again this year. She's incredibly smart and talks about marginal gains and perfecting game plans when she appears on the Single Track podcast. Like Keeley, she's likely to work her way up from behind, but my thinking on this one is that Keeley will work harder trying to catch the leaders and that Leah will eventually pick her off as well. Also, Leah plays and is very good at fantasy free trails, some pretty high finishes, I believe, so I'd be interested to see where she puts herself. Anyway, I'm going with Leah Yingling for fourth. Again, as previously mentioned, he's got a lot of experience at being at the sharp end of this race. He's good enough to win, but I think maybe the two guys I've got ahead of him will manage their effort better, as I'm confident Hayden will be leading or in the front group, even if the pack goes off a bit too hard, reminding me of his attempt to keep up with Jim in 2021, which just puts me off giving him the win. The highest place returning lady from last year, Emily Horgood will have learnt a lot from running more than half of the race alongside eventual winner Ruth Croft. She eventually faded to fifth last year, but I'm pretty confident she's capable of more. She followed up last year's performance with another great performance on the world stage, finishing sixth at UTMB. A fifth and sixth at two of the biggest races in the world are a better resume than pretty much everyone I've talked about already. I just think she has what it takes to get a podium here. I was slightly concerned I'd be labelled a Tom Evans fan channel if I picked him again for first, after picking him to win UTMP. So I'm going to say that this year he's just going to miss out on a Western States win. Possibly this will be due to the heat, as some of the sections he raced on previously are no longer as shaded as they once were, but possibly because he'll run with a lot of confidence and he'll maybe be tempted to cover moves that go off a little bit too hard at an unsustainable pace. I'm a big fan and I know how smart he is, so I doubt it will be the latter, but he is a fierce competitor and incredibly quick, so I think he's more likely to go off with a fast early move than the guy I'm going to tip for the win. Also, if I pick him for second, maybe I'll get it wrong again and he'll win, and then I'll be super happy anyway. I'm giving the runners-up spot on the women's side to Katie Scheid. I don't think I really need to say more than that she's the current UTMB champion. I've already spoken about her in my preview, where I did mention that I wasn't sure, but much like with Matthew Blanchard, I've landed on, if you're good enough to podium at UTMB, you're good enough to perform well here. 
He's a monster on hilly terrain and he's super fast on the runnable stuff. He's also an incredibly smart racer who's learned from more than a decade of high level competition. He's got everything needed to win this race and his pre-race single track interview was the final tick for me. His attitude towards racing his own race and competition in general gives me so much confidence that he won't get caught up in some of the early breaks from some of the fast hungry guys that might go off too hard. Plus, he comes across as a super nice guy who cycled over 600 miles to this race to reduce his carbon footprint. So yeah, my number one pick is Dakota Jones. No surprise to anyone who's watched my preview or my video earlier this year on Courtney, I think it's hers to lose. The only thing that could derail her is an injury like in 2019, but I don't see that happening. She's already up there with the greatest of all time and she's seemingly just getting better. Courtney DeWalter is my 2023 Western States champion. So they were my picks. Please try and be nice in the comments. I'm sure some of those takes may be controversial, but like predicting any sort of sport, it's mainly just gut feeling and opinions can vary massively. Please leave me your picks though in the comments and maybe pop back after the race and post your fantasy free trial score and I'll let you know if you've beaten me. I'm sure a lot of you will. If you haven't already, go and watch my other Western States videos and I hope you have a great time following the race on Saturday. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. I'll be back soon with more ultra running content. Cheers.